Hi, it's Thomas Cook from Toronto's real estate team at Remax, and here is our January 2015 Toronto real estate market report. One of the big surprises recently was the Bank of Canada's decision to lower their prime interest rate. I'll comment more on that in this broadcast as we go through the market report. So, let's review some of the Toronto Real Estate Board statistics and see what this is all about. Sales were up 6.1% for January compared to last year, with 4,355 houses and condominiums changing hands in all the districts. Condo townhouse and high-rise suites increased their share of the market to 35%, as they usually do in January, with uh, 1,526 units being sold. The January average sale price for all GTA, GTA homes came in at 552575 up 4.9% from 2014. The active listing inventory is one of the strongest indicators of how smooth or outrageous the market's going to be. We had a 20% decline in inventory for the month of January compared to historical numbers, and lower by 2.5% from last year at this time. The sales to listings, or percent chance of selling ratio, is how we determine what type of market we're actually in. 24 to 28 percent is a neutral market, below 24 is a buyer's market, and above 28 percent is a seller's market. In January, that ratio finished at 37.5 percent, up 3 percent from last year's result, and about normal for this time of year. By the numbers, the overall market is in moderate seller market territory. The days on market average for the entire Toronto Real Estate Board was 31. There's still higher demand, uh, higher buyer demand than the uh, number of available listings can handle. Just after the stats were released to the public, the typical press headline was that sales were up, but they actually were right at the average for January over the last 14 years. So let's look at what's happening in the downtown Toronto condominium market. West of Young and south of Bloor in the CO1 Treb district, the average sale price for January was just over 429500 That number represented a modest 4.3% decrease from the same time last year. With 192 condo sales in the month, the numbers were up 11.6% compared to 2014. There were 600, sorry, 964 active listings on the market in January, a slight 2.1% increase from last year. The ratio of sales to listings dropped below 20% for the first time since last January, which leaves CL1 in buyer market territory. The average days on market came in at 39, which was one day faster than in December. Now, east of Young and south of Bloor in the CO8 Treb district, the average sale price for January was just over 436000 That number represented a slight 4.4% increase from 2014. And with 76 condo sales in the month, the numbers were 5.6% higher than last year. There were 288 active listings on the market in January, 15% above 2013. 2014, my apologies. The ratio of sales to listings dropped back to 26.4% in January. That number puts CO8 into neutral market territory. The average days on market came in at 37, five days slower than last month. Although the strongest price growth this year will likely be in the single-family house market, continued interest in the condominium lifestyle will cause above-inflation price growth in the high-rise market as well. As you can see from the chart, the average resale home price has been climbing consistently every month for all three years shown on the chart. In fact, this has been happening ever since June of 2009. Here's a little trivia for you. Since 1997, the market only dipped one year in 2008. And even if that decline is factored in, the average price increased annually by 6.1% over that time. If you take just the period between 2010 and now, that average price gained 7.5% every year. If you purchased a home back 10 years ago, chances are extremely high that your property is now worth about 80% more than you paid for it. 
The lowering of the Bank of Canada's prime rate recently is the big news, although we consumers are unlikely to see any big drops in interest rates. The current five-year fixed is now commonly 2.79%. However, that drop, combined with probable appreciation rates in the sevens again this year, will help to keep affordability in check. Real estate continues to be an excellent long-term investment for many people, both as their prime residence and as an income property. So what's a terrific way to make your first baby step into Toronto's real estate market? The best first step is to go on a market experience tour of condo or house neighborhoods with one of our team members. What a tour is not intended to do is to show you homes with the intention that you'd buy one. What it is intended to do is give you a chance to get a clearer idea of what's available on the market in your favorite parts of the city and in your price range, without worrying about being pressured into having to make an immediate buying decision. Once you've had your tour, we want you to go back home and think about what you saw. You'll then be better able to set up a good home buying plan and make smart, educated decisions about where and when you want to be in your new home. You can sign up for your condo tour at dailydowntowncondotours.com. That's dailydowntowncondotours.com. And a tour of houses at dailytorontohometours.com. That's dailytorontohometours.com. Remember to check back here in early March for our February Toronto Real Estate Market Report.